All right. I want to say this for the record before we get started. This is literally the first webinar I've ever been on in my entire real estate career that started early. We are one minute early. Just want that, to you know. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's good to see everybody. Uh, my name is Jeff. Uh, I'm here with Freddie, Brian, and uh, the Osiris crew here to uh, welcome everybody to our first webinar series. Um, I'd like to welcome, you know, Mike Marjama. Um, dude, it is awesome to have you. We are going to be chatting through a lot of good stuff here, not just systems related. We're not going to bore you to death with systems related stuff, but we want to help everybody with where they're at in their business. And hopefully there's some nuggets here to, to pull. So um, appreciate you guys jumping on. And let's see, uh, Freddie, Brian, what, uh, why don't you guys tell everybody kind of things about you, you guys, you know, why don't you kick it, kind of kick this thing off. Oh, I get to go Brian. first. Okay, cool. Hi, buddy, Brian Curtis. Uh, so uh, kind of my history, I've been in the real estate business for about 20 years, got licensed in 01, which makes my head hurt that it's been that long. Um, I run a team out of Arkansas. We do about 500 sites a year. I'm also a real estate coach. And then my real passion, though, is actually in the last year being able to work with Jeff and Freddie, uh, building out these automations and creating cool tools for you guys here at Osiris. And so that's actually the thing I love the most, just being able to take something where there's a problem, I'm a problem solver. So I, I really enjoy that. And that's one of the reasons I love working with you guys. So, Thanks. Oh, man. Pass to you. Freddie? And hey everyone, you probably recognize me from some of our YouTube videos and whatnot, but it's good to see you all again. Um, obviously, Jeff and I founded this company together a couple of years ago now. I still am a full-time real estate agent. Um, I saw what you guys probably all know, Dan Beer down here in San Diego. And I think, you know, over the last couple of years, what's, and, and honestly, what's pushed us to start doing these Spotlight series is all the really, really cool people that we meet through Osiris, right? We're realtors as well, so we meet consumers and clients, but it's really great to not just network with other realtors, but to dive into multiple teams, solo agents doing solo agents, a hundred sides a year, or teams doing a thousand plus sides a year, but nobody's doing it the same. There's a lot of similarities within tech that we help glue together, but it's really been interesting to see how so many people create success for themselves in real estate, especially someone like Mike, um, you know, who really hasn't even been in the industry that long to achieve these numbers that he's already hitting. And so seeing how, you know, someone like Mike runs his business compared to all these hundreds of other clients and their businesses that we've touched. I think that's one of the most exciting things about what we've been able to do here and what has pushed us to, to do this webinar so we can start highlighting rock stars and people like Mike who are not just utilizing tech. And, and like I know, Mike, we like to call you the visionary and not just utilizing tech, but seeing how tech can play a really great role within their business. Whether or not you're utilizing Osiris to build that tech or not, just having technology and how that can help create more efficiency and success within your real estate business. And just the cool stuff that Mike's doing. We had a chance to talk last night about some unique things that he's doing that we want to share with you guys that are, that are working in his market. And so, um, you know, I think that's a good segue into introducing, you know, Mike Marjama here, rock star real estate agent, old professional baseball player. I mean, hitting numbers. Washed, at, washed gosh, up baseball player, Freddie. No, no, not at all. Not at all. But I mean, Mike, you know, we'd love to, I think, start off just hear a little bit about you, hear a little bit about your background. I know Jeff probably has some questions about your pro ball days. And, you know, I have some questions about your, these numbers that you're pushing, you know, utilizing tech, growing your team, you know, taking that transition from a solo agent to, hey, let's start a team and having the foresight to say, hey, let's get the tech dialed in before we get the people on the bus, right? Um, so I think, you know, let's start there, Mike, introduce yourself, uh, you know, let us know who you are and what you're all about. Yeah, so Mike, uh, born and raised kind of in uh, the suburbs of Sacramento a little bit, um, so kind of in between Sacramento and Tahoe, so I work quite a bit in, uh, got some family that was in the, been in the industry my whole entire life, um, kind of back and forth, they haven't done much over the past uh, decade or so, but uh, they mainly did Tahoe Truckee, so I grew up going to Tahoe all the time, so I'm kind of in North Lake Tahoe half the time, down in the valley half the time. And, um, you know, grew up here, played baseball my whole life. I honestly just did it because I thought it was a way to like talk to cute girls because they were like, hey, you're a baseball player. I mean, did I really enjoy the game? Yeah, of course I did. But but it was kind of like my avenue and struggled with some things when I was younger. And, um, you know, eventually I got to the major leagues after probably about was eight years in the minor leagues. So, you know, of let's, let's say you first get your license. You're not, it's not like you're, I mean, there's some people that bring in the money, but like most people it's, it's kind of a grind. And that was the minor leagues, right? Riding on buses from, 
you know, Waterloo, Iowa to no offense to anybody in Waterloo. Um, but like, so the middle of, like we were just honestly, like it was just, it was, it was hard making $800 a month and just trying to figure out how you were just going to try to achieve this dream. And I think a lot of us have that idea of real estate where we think it's champagne and that's what everyone anticipates, but is it, um, there's so much more behind it. And so, um, you know, I, I had talked about mental health and I had struggled with depression, anxiety, and eating disorder when I was younger. And I got to go on some TV shows and good morning America and the doctor, I mean, it got to do a circuit and talk about my struggles. And so part of that is being able to kind of transition now into where my business is and hopefully help some people along the way, uh, in that Avenue as well. So, um, you know, we got up to nine agents, 10, we were basically onboarding 10, had a few leave, had a few come, like been just like everyone that's trying to grow a team, kind of have struggled. Maybe someone hasn't. I don't know if you haven't. I would love to meet you. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Me too, please. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, but it's been good. So uh, first year in the business was great. Um, you know, was pushing over 50 sides. You know, we did about a little over 35 million uh, myself and it was just burnout. And it was like, okay, this is not enjoyable. I remember being in the big leagues. Um, not enjoying it was like, there needs to be a change. And yeah. I said, and I've always been an avid student. I think over the course of time, I've learned that implementing is more important. Like imperfect action is better than perfect inaction. Um, and I heard Jeremy Larson say that not too long ago. And I think that was like one of the biggest things that clicked for me was like, you need to start putting things in place and you need to start preparing for where you want to go. And how are you going to put that in place before you get there? Because when you get there, at least in my nature, we panic and then go, oh my gosh, uh, I, I got to start cutting everything or I need it. And then when it starts getting lean again, you're like, well, I don't need it, start cutting it. Um, mm -hmm. But then you ramp back up and you're on this yo-yo. And so how do you just say, you know what? I'm here. This is where I'm going to be. I'm where my feet are at. And let me prepare for that. And it makes me a better leader, honestly. So um, you know, my story is, is a lot of baseball, but it's a lot of, uh, using what I've learned along that journey, like we all have in our life and trying to apply it now in a different avenue. Yeah. I mean, and from my perspective, dude, it's been incredibly impressive to, you know, uh, you know, learn from you and see how you've, you know, flourished in the business side. And, and I'm sure, you know, going through those challenges, you know, in your ball career has really set you up to not like over you know, be emotional about those ups and downs, right? I'm emotional, so, Jeff. <laughs> I'm yeah. emotional. I am an emotional wreck. But it's in baseball, right? Like if you hit 300, like you're an all, like you're having a year. That means you're failing right. seven out of 10 times. So like not everything is going to work. Like look at conversion rates. Like you get into business and I'm like, man, I should be hit, you know, I should be hitting 500 and Dude, no one hits 500 a conversion. Like, right. so yeah. it's like when you're like, oh, I should be the 300 hitter. No one's a 300 hitter in conversion. So I think when we start getting to like actually take the analytics and go, what can I control, right? From when I'm a hitter, I don't have the ball. So if a guy throws me four balls, I mean, I was a catcher. I, I like to think squatting infielder instead. Um, I don't like to say <laughs> you're a catcher, you know, I'm like, no, I'm not that. Um, <laughs> But no, I, I, I looked at it and said, you know what, how can I do things different or what would I want? And so I started trying to look at that and I go, you know what, what can I control? I can control how I communicate with people, the cadence of which I communicate with people. Um, just like I can't control the at-bat. If a pitcher throws me four balls, I'm walking or unless I swing, which I did most of my career, I swung at balls, but whatever. So the idea was just like, what are you doing that's going to make you successful? Lead measures versus lag measures, right? What can I control? And if I do that and that consistent action, I'll play in the big leagues. I'll get to where these gotcha. big teams are or where they want to be. And it's it's starting to look at like, how can I digest that? Because I, I love, like I am envy Sunit more than anybody and watch what Sunit's doing here in Sacramento. Like I, I watch everybody, Barry Jenkins, Brian, Jeff, like all of you guys, Dan B. Like I admire everyone. I look at what Kenny Fast is doing. Like I, I see Kenny and I'm like, I'm just in awe. And I go, I need to learn. And so it's not that it's anything more than taking the failures and taking what everyone is doing and just saying, great. Now that I've learned, how can I implement? That's yeah. what I've done in my career is when I was playing baseball was it wasn't about just talking about it. It was about doing it. And if you, if you just talked about hitting, you weren't a better hitter. 
But if you talked about it and then put it into play, you'd be a better player. So you've had that foresight. I mean, so at what point when you started in real estate, did you like say, okay, I need to have a little bit of foresight to see what I want to build? Because a lot of us have gotten in and they just start to operate and then they go, oh, shoot, I forgot I should be doing this or I should have done this. You've had that foresight from early on, which has been so impressive to see. What kind of led you to that, that thought process? Watch who's the best. Yeah. Right. Like I was fortunate enough to play, you know, like catch Felix Hernandez on an opening day, you know, like I've gotten to play with the Robinson Cano or a Nelson Cruz, or like, you know, I played with hall of famers, shared locker rooms with them. I would be an idiot if I didn't listen or I wasn't a sponge to those people. Right. Like as much as like me sharing here, like I'm just honored that I'm in the room with you guys because I sit in the freaking Facebook group and follow up boss or Y Lopo or any one of those. And I'm just a sponge. And whether or not I do the business I did last year, and I can tell you, I'm not even close to doing the business I did last year because I'm just being a sponge. And yeah. what can I slowly start to integrate? And this last year has been one of the hardest of my life. But I think for me, it was, I need to learn from the people that have been there before me because they've had the at-bats. Nelson Cruz said something that I still do when I walk into appointment now, when he was walking to the plate, um, our mental skills, basically, um, we have like a sports psychologist on the team and he would walk up to the plate with bases loaded and his average would be like 50, like 050 or like 100. It was horrible. And Nelly's like a, you know, career, like three something hitter. Like he's, he rakes. Well, why did he struggle when the bases were loaded? Or why did he struggle in those games? Well, they looked at the film and the way he walked to the plate in those big situations, he walked faster. So you can you imagine how, so instead, you know, the thing that they did from the on-deck circle to when he got to the batter's box, he would drag his feet. So you actually look at Nelson Cruz walk to the plate. It's almost like he's cross-country skiing. But the reason he does that is it slows him down. So imagine if we did that walking to that listing appointment or you're walking into that, oh, I'm going to go in that meeting and you're like, I'm, I'm speeding up. What am I going to say? What am I? It's like, take a deep breath, center yourself to right here. You're working on this pitch or whatever it is. And if you need to, physical cues, drag your feet. It's going to naturally slow you down. So those little things like that were taking the veterans, taking the people that have done it before you and done it successfully and learning from them. Nice. Well, I got, so I got two more questions. I mean, I was excited to talk oh. to him. So, um, and then I'll turn it over to you guys, but, um, so tell me like, okay, what do you want to do next? Like, okay, you've gotten a chance to kind of live through the pain of like actually doing well and having no time to kind of, you know, revisit that and, and see where you want to go. Where do you want to go? And then what does your technology and your stack look like now? And maybe what you think it's going to look like. So I've tried, uh, where do I want to go? I want to help, uh, like I want to build a team. The reason is, is because I've been a part of my a team my whole life. And I just got back into coaching. I, I haven't really coached baseball that much. I would help with the high school when I was done. So I was helping out a, a local team here, uh, a college summer league team, and I've been loving it. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not doing the business I did, but like I love, I'm back to enjoying being around people. And I was like, you know why? Because I was empowering. A guy just hit, we were tie game, big game last night. Guy hits a three run jack at the end. And he goes, well, what's your approach? I said, just don't miss the cookie. When a guy makes a mistake, <laughs> don't miss the cookie. So in his post game interview, you know, they're like, what was your approach? And he goes, the guy throws me a cookie. I don't miss it. And, I, and his, his face just lit up. And it was just like watching him take just it's not like i did anything i didn't hit the hole i didn't i just said hey man don't miss the cookie but that little click for him made like dude like it's still it like gives me goosebumps and so that's what i'm trying to do in my real estate i guess mm -hmm. here now is like that person that's really struggling or wants to unlock or just wants to learn and then go out and do their own like that's cool i don't need to be the face i don't need to be and i just i want to be able to continually help people achieve and so um, that's kind of where I would like to get to. Cause I, I feel more called, uh, in that action. Um, and then from a tech stack perspective, honestly, like I've tried quitting, uh, Y Lopo, I've tried quitting every program and I've come to a realization that like, I've been trying to perfect things and I've been searching for the magic pill and the magic pill does not exist. And I'm, I'll be the first one to admit we're all guilty of it. Just like when people come, I'm sure they come to you guys and they're like, solve all my problems with systems. And you're like, uh, how long have you got? Yeah. <laughs> you want me to make like the, 
you know, I can't make the Tupac hologram for, you know, Coachella and have it like do everything. Like it's not him. Like right. it's kind of is. So like, I think for me, FUB is the hub. From a tech stack perspective, FUB is the hub. I love follow-up boss has been being able to integrate things in and out, just like kind of we have talked about, um, is a game changer for me. So that will um, that will continue to remain. Um, everybody on the team loves it comparatively to some other um, CRM companies, things like that. And then from there, it's just creating organization and follow-up cadence. So learning from others. So, I mean, we can totally dive into that. I can kind of show you guys a bunch of this stuff. Um, but I know I've just taken what we've worked on and just now try to say, all right, this is the theory behind it, or here's the vision. Now, how do I implement? Mm -hmm. So instead of biting off 30 things, it's just choose one, put it into action. Once that's rolling, choose another one, put it into action. So nice. that's kind of where we're at now. And we can dive into that further, obviously. Yeah, definitely. So for everyone else, you know, a little background um, on, on Mike and Osiris's relationship. I'm going to say probably October last year, Mike, we met for the yep. first time, something around there. And, you know, Mike came to us and is like, look, solo agent rushed it last year. Don't want to work like that again, though. Right. I mean, you were just that you were working to the ends of the hours, burn the candle on both ends. Just it was too much. Right. And you're like, OK, but I see the path to a team and I see that tech's involved in that path. And here, you know, at Osiris, we meet clients in all stages. You know, we're meeting teams with 200 agents that really don't have any tech. And we're like, all right, let's make a big change and let's implement a lot of automation, integrated tech into our real estate business. But then we also meet people, you know, like Mike, who were really you know, a good year almost out from having your team. You fast track that a lot, put it back down about six months for you to start growing your team. But you had the foresight of saying, hey, look, I don't have all the time in the world. I'm not going to be able to build every single system myself. I need leverage in my real estate business, in building the tech for my real estate business, in giving out leads to agents because I can't show every house and I can't meet every seller, right? You see the value in leverage. And so we met last year and started to kind of create this roadmap for you but we haven't turned everything on, right? We just designed, and, and really with you being the visionary, designed this structure for how your systems will work for you today. We'll work for you with three agents and five agents and 10 agents as you get all the way up to the 100 or, or wherever you see yourself going, right? And so having that foresight to create the structure first and plug the people into the structure rather than, hey, let's just grow a team. We'll run everything on paper and once we're all used to that, let's change everything because we want to get technically integrated, right? And you have that foresight to say, hey, let's get it set up now or let's at least create the structure and visualize that tech stack for my team, even though I don't have a team yet. A hundred percent. And and like that was fundamentally, I just went down to San Diego. So Dan Beer had an event and you know, I, I knew about EOS for a long time. So entrepreneur operating system, we talked a lot about it. Well, I test like at a 98% visionary, but my implementer score is also at like 90. So it's not like I'm either or, like I love both. But one thing I remember walking away and his feedback, and I remember John Chet Black was challenged. You know, there's a bunch of stuff going on and Laura was, and, and Dan Beers and everybody was talking. So we, we got to this whole conversation. I remember leaving goes, well, what do you think? And I said, well, we came for the operations playbook. And I remember coming down there, we haven't talked anything about systems. We've talked about what well, you hired. There's this person and we have a sales manager and we have this, and we have that. And, I, and afterwards I was getting so upset. I'm like, we haven't talked about transaction management. We haven't talked about lead. We haven't talked about any of that. But I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like it hit me on the drive. I drove from San Diego back from Northern California and on the drive, you know, I'm just kind of letting myself go. And I'm like, wait, we didn't even talk one time about systems we talked about operations as an organizational structure so are you an agent or are you a business and it starts really taking you back and going whoa, whoa, whoa. am i just an agent am i just that person that's going to have to be showing homes at 70 years old am i that person that's going to have a business that i can either sell and or step out of and start working on rather than in and i think when you take a step back operations isn't always just hey let's create a home bot integration that goes into slack and all that stuff like that's operations but like that's a that's kind of an operation like that's a process but if we're business owners are we 
operations? Do we have sales managers? Do we have ISAs? Do we have these departments? And are they reporting to somebody? And is that person then reporting to you? So you're not managing everything? Because let's be real, we'd like to think we're the best at everything, but we're not. So can we make that shift in our head? Honestly. Yeah, that shift from a, a realtor to a business owner of a real estate company, right? 100%. 100% because you're competing and they even said this when you're hiring people or you're putting in processes guess what you're competing against Boeing you're competing against Sutter Hell you're competing against big companies because your admin person is doing admin work for you which they could be doing for the hospital for 80 grand a year with full benefits so what do you have well we work in real well great but yeah but like they're trying to feed their family no one has ever asked me honestly no one's ever asked like they're like Oh, you played in the big league, sell my house. No one's ever asking that. They're like, can right. you get, like, good for you. Can you get me an extra 10 grand? Are you gonna like they don't care? They're like, that's cool. Congratulations. Like, you want to help my, my kid with a swing? So, like for me, I think it's a little bit more like, hey, how are we going to um how are we going to look at this from a business owner perspective and rely less on me being a baseball player and more of me being a business owner? And that's what a lot of these systems are, are centered around now is auditing. Are leads getting followed up with? Um, are we able to get them things in a timely manner? So like Kyle Whistle says this all the time, instead of speed to lead, how about speed to response? So when somebody is in your system and then they come back, are you able to get to them? That's the type of stuff that I think is, is more valuable than um, you know, us worrying about, you know, well, I play baseball. Let me make a cool social post about it. Like, yeah, that's, that's not worth well, my time. So real quick, so Jim, you know, I appreciate you jumping in on the Q&A, dude. And Mike, you mentioned EOS. What is yeah. that? Walk us to what EOS is. Yeah, and I put EOS a link is, in there for you as well, Jim, just so you can see their website. Yeah, so it's Entrepreneurial Operating System. So cool. what the basic structure is, is as entrepreneur, as real estate agents ourselves, um, or team owners or whatever, um, how do you have a business structure? Who's working on what? Um, you know, I have a director of operations I've brought on. And right now, like, to be quite frank, we clash at times because it's like, well, am I taking this or are you taking this? And my vision is not her vision. And is this mine to own or is that yours to own? And so you're wearing multiple hats. And sometimes you have to step out and go, I'm the visionary. And basically, if you read the book Traction, it'll show you by Gina Wickman, it'll kind of lay out there or rocket fuel is another good one. But for every visionary person who's the ADD person that's like squirrel and they're gone and they have all the great ideas in the world, but nothing ever gets done. That's the visionary. And then normally out of all the great companies that have ever been around, there's been an integrator. There's been somebody that has made all these great ideas, sift through them and then kind of be like, okay, let's put this one into action. And they're accountable for putting that in. And, and normally those, like, if we want to look at disc profiles and things like that, they're normally just, they're different. There's the, someone that likes to be the dreamer, likes to be the go out ahead and look around the corners. And then there needs to be that person that makes sure things get put into place. Cause if that doesn't happen, you really get nowhere. So that's kind of EOS. And so I look at like the book traction or rocket fuel or one of those, and that will, uh, they have a whole website and, and tools you can, you can look into as well. But yeah, yeah. So and, that's it. Go ahead, Frank. I was going to say, go ahead. And, and that's a business model that it's not just for real estate. Fortune 500 companies. I mean, this is a mindset that's agnostic to industry of how you should run and organize your business to operate efficiently between all the different branches of your business. And, you know, there's when you're a small business or a startup company, you wear a lot of hats. But eventually you grow and scale and you have that goal most times when you're starting a small business to grow and scale, to take a hat off and give it to somebody. But a lot of real estate agents and realtors just like they see it, the, the end game is, hey, I'm just a realtor. I wear all these hats all the time. And then having to kind of shift that focus to see, hey, this is how I go become a business owner. This is how I go become not the person that has to do every single thing every single day, right? And how to get there. This is a good roadmap to follow to see how you can set your business up in that manner. Yeah, and, and telling a story, right? So when you're an individual, like say we first get our license and I, I tell this to all the new agents because I just, I tell them straight up. I said, here's what's going to happen. 
you're going to work really, really hard and get the lead. Then you're going to focus on that lead and you're going to be like tunnel vision on that one person. And then you're going to probably show them around for about maybe 30 days, maybe, hopefully it's just that short. And then all of a sudden they're going to write a contract and hopefully they get accepted. And if they do, then you're going to be so worried about making sure you don't screw up that transaction that now another 30 days has probably passed, right? Or so now you're looking at 60 days and you haven't even earned a paycheck yet. You haven't gotten paid a dime. And that's if everything goes fantastic. So I said, first of all, you got to go fishing. And like one of the things I always like to say too, is when you get into real estate, here's a baseballism. There's no minor leagues in real estate. There is no rookie ball pitcher you get a hit off. Once you get your license and you step out, guess what? Brian and I are going against each other. And if, if he wins it, it helps his people, the people on his team, and it helps put food on their table. And if I win it, it helps put food on my table and my team. So when you get into real estate and you think someone's going to be like, oh, we're going to help you with all that. No, they're not. No one's ever going to hand you a listing. They're going to give it to their people. Why? Because they have a business centered around it. So there is no minor leagues. There is no like, hey, you get this. Here's the listing you know, appointment. This guy is going to take it easy on her. This guy only throws 80. No, like everyone wants listings. So are you going to surround yourself with the people that are doing it well that can train you or mentor you to be that person? Because once you get in it, like I said, it's there is no minor leagues. You're in it. And, and I so think something that's important. Why, Eighty-five percent of people are out. What is it? Eighty-five, ninety percent of people are out in the first year. It's even higher. It's like eighty-eight now. Yeah, it's like good yeah. luck. And so it's 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 you know should you join a team? Honestly, yeah. Like if it's a good team, but do your research and learn and grow. And the good team leaders will want you to graduate and start doing your thing. So I think like those are the type of things that like there are people that are willing to help you, but there is no minor leagues. And so when you start taking a look at this, like you better start learning and you better be all in because if you're not, you'll get chewed up and spit out. And it's and not. That's the, that's the help in the real estate industry. And I, I feel like us being one of those industries that has a TV show um, that, uh, you know, <laughs> highlights literally nothing that we actually have to do to be successful in real estate, but we get this image. Right. And so I think a lot of times that people think the help is here is business. Here are deals. This, you know what? You take this seller, I'll just get the next one. Does that happen? Yeah, sure. One in a million, love to meet the guy who gets that listing from somebody that just hands it to him because I have a lot of questions. But it really doesn't happen. The help in real estate, though, is what I think you've seen, Mike, is you've made a pretty big switch in your business in the last month or so, right, with brokerages. And I think that the help can get misconstrued in real estate. The help is, I'm open. I'll tell you how I go and get that listing. And I'll show you my marketing plan. I'll show you my follow-up funnel. I'll show you my advertising funnel. You can go replicate it and do it yourself. But if we both show up to that door, I'm going to work just as hard to make sure that I get that listing to feed my people as you should to get that listing to feed your people. I'm never just going to give it to you. But I'll tell you how I get to that door, how I get that appointment, how I have the conversations to allow me to be in the living room in the kitchen with the seller, right? And, and it's really great to see you apply, I think, Three things are really standing out to me that you're, you clearly applied from a professional sports career to real estate, hard work ethic. There's nothing easy about real estate. There was not ever going to really be anything easy about real estate. I never understood this when I first got in. People would tell me $200,000 transaction is the same work as a $2 million transaction. I was like, no way, because the $2 million one pays me way more money. They're the same work. They are just as hard as each other, right? And there's nothing that's easy. So having that hard work ethic and knowing that there's not handouts, but then also, you know, having that consistency through the ups and downs, right? You were, like you said, in the minors for quite a while before you got to the MLB. I'm sure that mentally there's ups and downs in there that are similar to the ups and downs of real estate, right? You're like, oh, it's summer. I got five escrows. November rolls around. You're like, Ooh, I'm buying presents and I got nothing under contract, right? And so figuring out how to deal with those and then bringing it back to the consistency, right? you probably did some of the same things over and over and over and over and over and over in those eight years to hone your craft to get you to the, to the major leagues, right? And so it's, it's knowing and identifying those rocks within your business that work. One of them, I think that most people shy away from that really it, it works, calling your clients and texting them, right? That, has, that always works. And so when you're in those lows to know, you know what, I'm going... 
consistency and back to the basics. I'm going to call clients. I'm going to call leads. I'm going to get into my database, but not letting go of that consistency on the highs either, right? Just because you got five in escrow doesn't mean you stop prospecting. And and Freddie, I think it's it's feeling the situation. Brian and Jeff have literally opened my eyes on that. So yeah. like I'm, I'll dive in here a little bit because I want to show I want to give like our people some yeah. stuff that I've been working on so you guys can kind of see and and everyone can kind of have an idea and and like I said follow up boss is the point so my rocks are built in now of providing value so like I love like what Barry Jenkins says all the time uh, the fact that like so I'll show you can you guys see this okay yeah yeah okay so this is just you know, from follow boss perspective, I want to share some, some programs that I'm using here. So I'm just going to pop into basically my own profile right here. Um, what we do is we run, I run smart lists as basically communication stages. So you're going to see like, there's going to be, you know, active sellers, but it's going to be like, if they're hot, it's weekly follow-up. If it's warm, they're bi-weekly follow-ups so every two weeks. If it's cold, it's they're getting followed up with once a month. So everybody in the database should be followed up with once a month. So instead of staging, because here's what happens. Most agents will say, oh, this person is C. This is a cold lead. They'll throw it in the cold lead bucket. And then what happens? They never talk to that person for, let's just say, six months. But life circumstances changed. And that person didn't get anything for six months and they already made the transaction because things happen. So Chris Vanderbach says this all the time on Kyle Whistle's team. He actually looks at it this way. He says, uh, communication stages work for your clients. Now deal stages are linear, but communication stages for where someone is in a, in a sales process is constantly evolving. What happens if they have someone in their family die? What happens if someone gets pregnant? What happens? You, you don't know. So like the ninja idea of Ford, you don't know when those, when those, those aspects might be happening. So continually touching those people. Now, does that require me to call, text? Does that, it, that's totally up to what you decide to do. But I went to the point of, we're in a second home market a lot up in the Truckee area in Tahoe. So those people, certain things do not resonate with them the way they would maybe someone in a different market. They are more of a tech savvy Bay Area second home person. It's different down here in the foothills in you know, the suburbs of Sacramento. It's a different, you know, it's, it's, they're the primary home person that is buying that second home up there. So what we've done is I'll kind of jump back in here is we just use our communication stages to do that. So as you guys have talked about with, you know, any one of the different, um, you know, stages or anything like that, you're moving people and the automations happens, so you can follow up. That's perfect. So what we've done is we've added, you know, you can have HomeBot happen. You can have, you know, any one of the HomeBot reports automatically get added. So what I started doing is building on top of that. So a program I love that I wanted to cover for our people, because I know probably a lot of the system members know what we already, or kind of what Osiris does in terms of hopefully is post, uh, post appointment text automations, um, action plans, uh, revaluate scores, say once it hits an 80, we can have an AM cards drip campaign with call action, reamless voicemails and texts happen. But here's a program I love. It's called High Note. Mm -hmm. High Note is incredible. The reason why it's incredible is here's a presentation on High Note that I just put for buyer resources. So we'll just open this up as a preview. And in this preview, you can see here's a bunch of buyer resources Mm -hmm. That could just be getting to know me and the team. And you can open it up and here's a YouTube video. The best part is you can start your home search. This takes them right to Ylopo. They can start looking at homes. Here's a buyer consultation. Here's a sample purchase agreement in the state of California that they can just take a look at. Here is, you know, any buyer consultation, the cost of, of waiting analysis we can have. Our team members, here's the home search app. If they want to download it, it'll take them right to the link. Here's how you connect with us on Zillow. If you want to get any feedback, you can. So we build this into a email that goes out right away. When someone enters the system, this one gets sent out. We have um, more that are done. And Freddie, I know we talked about this uh, too. We've done offers. So we do our offers through High Note. The reason we do our offers through High Note is I can track the analytics. Mm -hmm. So agents love this. The reason agents love this is my offer shows up. So if I just preview this, I'll show you what it looks like from this side. It'll say something like, you know, hi, Donna, attaches our offer. Here it is. 
we also split it up. And here's also, let's just say you want to do a Loom video. Here's a Loom video talking, I probably deleted it. Here's a Loom video talking about the offer. Here is the offer summary that you can take a look at. Here is, you know, the pre-approval letter. So Thank what you. happens is the reason this gets so good, and then we offer the entire offer as one PDF file because they can just download it right out of here and they can just send that off to whoever they need. So they can send the link and they can sign it or whatnot. The reason we also send this through here is there's analytics. So it can say this person opened it this time, they spent this much time looking at this page or they spent this much time looking at it. So when the days that there were offer deadlines and someone was not opening our offer, we were probably not even close to coming in in uh -huh. for that property. Or if they were like looking at the pre-approval letter all the time, it was just like, great, call the lender. Lender, call them right now. And so as you're getting these updates, you could then go in and say, oh, that's what I need the lender to do. They're looking at page three of the RPA. They're looking at an inspection contingencies. Okay, I need to address that. So what it also comes by is actually, if you look on here, if I send an offer, this is what it looks like as a thumbnail. So I can just click right into the offer and I just send that as a text. Well, what's great is if I have the person's contact information as an agent in follow up boss, take the high notes link. So let's just say I have a presentation and I will do a offer, send it, send the link as a presentation or whatever I want, and then just throw it into, this is my favorite thing, live link URLs, text it out of follow up boss. Incredible. Put it in, text it out. Put it to a custom field. You can do that all through Follow Up Boss. So High Note is incredible. The one that I think is so underutilized that I think agents should spend more time on, in my opinion, is doing community reports. The reason why I say this is we created with AM cards, I created a what's called a nosy neighbor report. Mm -hmm. uh, Brivity, so I'm a huge fan of Ben Kinney. I think Ben Kinney has, he is one of my idols of people. Um, I, I like a lot of brevity things. Um, the CRM is still a work in progress. Um, but uh, they do what's called a market report. Um, so what you can do is like, here's the Serene Lakes residential. This is a, a community up there. So what you can do is if I click on it, I, I am a battle, Brian knows this, I'm in a battle with HomeBot. Because HomeBot evaluations, they come in low and I think people think I'm an idiot. So instead what we've done is I think people are smart. So I'm, I'm erring on that side. And so what I think is going to happen is in the Brivity Market Report here, you can create one for every individual person or you can create them for a community. So what we do is this highlights the active, pending, and sold homes in a specific subdivision. Well, if, I, if you own a home in here and I send this to you, you get to now be interactive and look at pictures and play around with it. But you're going to look at this most likely, at least most of my clients do, and they look at it and go, oh my gosh, you're telling me the Johnson's house at the 3, 2, 1400 square foot is pending at 1, 6? My house is way better than that. Great. Now, uh, you have just set that analysis. So now when I call you and say, hey, I just sent over, or let's just say an automated text comes over and says, hey, we just sent over a market report. Let me know what you think. The great part about that is now that person is going, I, there's no way. Well, now I know their expectation on what they think. So now it's just immediately given me a point of reference to be able to talk from. And they're not seeing, oh, my house isn't worth 500. This guy has no idea what he's talking about. This is just an automated piece of crap. So I'm in a battle with HomeBot at times because of some of the valuation stuff, although it is a very well open tool. And I will admit, I'm still in it sure um, well and you know what before you jump into anything else like i brian do you, have you noticed like he ha has checked his ego with all of this stuff he's like i'm just going to learn from what other people have done and here's the other thing i notice is every every we interview 100 different team leaders and people in the industry we're going to get 100 different answers on how they are working this out right and so he has taken what other people have done and adopted it to his own personality and his own style of ways of, of what he wants to do um, that that's going to mold to to what he wants in his business. There's no like everybody's got to do it this way or this way or this way. 
you've got to have a, your own kind of take on it, your own personality on it and how you want it to operate, right? Have you noticed yeah. that? Yeah, and you're smart. You're smart, Jeff. Like, and in, in when you said you can take Excel, uh, you can take basically Excel cells and you can put those into templates or you can put them into custom fields. So what if you just created, because under their CMA, under their, their market report tools, you can share it and you can do an unrestricted access URL or you can do a forced registration URL. The best part about these URLs is their live link. So they update mm -hmm. all the time. So the best part is now I just take those, put them in a spreadsheet. Now you can put those in a custom field or you can say, yep. if this person's inquiry is for 95728, I want this texted, this link, a restricted one texted to them they register that or they they fill out their information it auto populates right and follow up boss again so now i can now just put all that information back in and i can take that url and throw it right into their it's brilliant custom field here just like cloud cma has done with live links and the pdf links so now we're just doing the same thing for communities that they've reached out about so instead of saying hey here's your report i can say hey here's what's going on in the local community so that's that's just one of the ways that we've really you know come about it. Area Pulse is another one we're working. I'm working directly with on getting it integrated. Um, theirs is very very similar. You're going to get a really cool little all branded thing that pops up, um, and then it'll show you pretty much the same exact um, information as well. And then you can play around with it and view what's going on. So Area Pulse is another one we're doing you know same exact thing for. Um, Hugely valuable, man. I mean, it's just hugely valuable. I'm really glad that we got you on here to kind of show, showcase this, you know, yeah. and, and you get into the weeds so much and it's like, holy moly, you can get into the details so fast with so much that it goes over people's heads. And so, you know, if there's anything you could share, you know, with, with the people that are in the chat or in the community, what is one or two takeaways to implement something like this that they should go look at first? Um go into the, the, I think the place that people don't spend enough time in, honestly, is the follow up boss success community. If you're not a follow up boss user, like you, I don't think you'll have access to it. Um, but like, you know, a lot of us are moderators in that in follow up boss community, but I can tell you right now you get, I have so much value in that community. So like, if you don't know, go to uh, Facebook, um, and then go to, and you can do this with any group. I'm, I'm a part of, I have Brivity as well for, for several things, but if you go to a follow boss success community, go to this little search, I, you know, the search glass right here. If you don't know how to use Facebook, go to that search glass and just type in whatever you need to. So like one of the things that I was, was looking at recently was with Wailopa, you get the listing alert sunset. So one thing that I hated in follow a boss was the fact that I didn't know who was on active listing alerts and who wasn't. So instead of creating the smart list or, you know, you can have a smart list that says if the tag is, you know, sunset listing alert. Well, what we did is I just created a custom field that says listing alert. Yes. Why local listing alert? Yes or no. Well, when that tag gets added, change that. No. Yep. So it's just an easy way to do it. So when you're looking in someone's profile, I can see that this person without going to stars is there. And we added real scout, which by the way, epic, yeah, epic. Good guys, good, really good, good platform. I don't know if you guys, I'm, I'm going to go on a way big tangent right here because I'm tangent. As, <laughs> um, dude, their listing tools. I don't know if you, have you played around with it much? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I mean, it's just a good company. They've done a great job. Dude, their market alert little thing right here, game change. So if you just type in, so like, like let's just say I look at, I just oh. did this. This is another one for people. Use Loom and use BombBomb. So like if I just put in Serene Lakes, let me give you an example. I won't even put price. Let me just do preview market report. What I want you to watch at right here is they'll say select client. So this is just like that Brevity Marker report somewhat, but what it does is it'll show you of uh, people that are registered on listing alerts. So this, and in, to be in Real Scout, you have an agent, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're using somebody's portal here. So it's the best part is the last 90 days, check this out. Oh, let me go to even a better one. And this is in your database? Those are the people this that are in your in database? My, no. So this isn't in my database because I would reverse prospect through what yeah. they've looked at based on the tags that would get associated. So if a person is looking average price point this, I would reverse prospect through, you know, a Y Lopo or any one of them. But gotcha. the, the the one that I really like is if I do, let's I'll just do a broader search so you can see like 
how crazy this has gotten. So when someone, when I'm, when I'm sending this out to clients, instead of saying, hey guys, trust me, this is what's happening. I open everything up to my clients. I say, you wanna see how many people are interested buyers in this area? Go to all people and follow a boss and I'll just filter for tags and say, include, I wanna get a buyer at, what is their zip code? So we'll say if they have you know, all of them, we'll say any 96161, and say, here are my trucky buyers. I got 31 people right now. And if you want to get even better, go to Aver go to Costco, go average price point is in this price range. Your price range isn't here. I have these people. They were on my website two days ago, or you know, we could just go from last visit. We had this many people on in the last you know month. We've had one, two, three, four people on or whatever. And that's where did you I'm learn thinking. this? Where did you learn this, by the way? That's amazing. And I mean, you've taken and you've gone and seeked out the information, but then you've also taken action on it and yeah. applied your own twist on it, right? Which is, uh, that's what I wanna see, right? Is take the tech that's available to us and then use that to put your spin and your touch, your personality into it. Yeah, so I, I talked to people like Gabe Cordova who does a ton in our community in the follow-up boss community. I talked to Gabe, well, we went to a follow-up boss mastermind. By the way, FubCon coming up, be there. Um, we open our play, everyone's like, hey, and he literally looked Jeff, he looked at my like my my columns here and goes, Mike, why do you have phone number and email? And I'm like, uh, right. uh, I don't know. He goes, you don't need them. He goes, why is it there? He goes, all I care about is where do they, what stage are they in? You don't even need stage. What is their source? What was their last activity? When? How many properties have they looked at? How many properties have they saved? What's the average price point? And when was the last time I talked to them? That's all I care about. I don't care what their email is and what this other stuff is. Are you going to reach this person or not? And so he showed me the reverse prospecting. So I put it in this and I, I now show this to clients. I think I hopefully you guys will like this. There were yeah. 1,500 active buyers and 26,000 interactions in the last 90 days. Do we want to know if the market's changed? 15,000 and what? There's like 26,000 or something like that. I forget what it was. 1,500 and 26,000. Less than a thousand and nine thousand. So from twenty six thousand interactions to mm. less than ten thousand, you think the market hasn't changed? The heck, it hasn't. Here are the top viewed listings across those people that are there. So now, when that listing agent calls me, or when I call that other that other agent, and that other agent's like, "Well, we have a you know, we've got a few offers on the table." Yeah, you're right. When you've been on the market for 45 days and I just seen our buyer pool get cut into a, you know, two thirds of it is gone. Um, okay. Um, I had someone write on one of my properties. We listed at 165. They wrote at 195. They overpaid because the agent didn't know and thought there was a ton of traction still that someone overpaid $300,000 for a home. That's not a brat. That's nothing I did. That's because that person wasn't aware of what's going on. My biggest fear is letting down clients. I'm a fiduciary for my client. If I do not do a good job for my client, they've worked really hard for their money. I do not want to be the person that puts them at risk. I think I joined your team, dude. What's going on? <laughs> no. um, what do you, what do you yeah. think would be one thing that is the most impactful for the current situations and the current business that you're in? what would be the most impactful tool that you use that maybe would get more conversions or better contacts? You tell me, what do you think is most impactful? This? Loom. Loom. Yeah. Loom. It's cheap and nothing or bomb bomb. Here's the, here's the, you know, brevity or I mean, uh, sorry, this is a home bot. This is, this goes out with the home bot report, right? As a, um, this yeah. goes out part of, you know, the stuff that, that you guys have. Um, but I think that right there, the Loom video is tremendous because it puts you in a personal touch with this person. So all I did, for example, was say, you know, here's the, yeah. I don't know if it'll come through, but like, here is me talking right here at an open house. I'm holding this house open. No one was there. And I was scrolling through and going, oh my gosh. So I looked at 90 days or 30 days and I just sent a Loom video of what this is. Yep. You, so you can do, do this, this on rinse and repeat man. or anything. And yeah. now that person that goes, Oh my gosh, why didn't I talk to you? I remember sending this to, to Steve. Like this was one of my favorite. I might have to like, I love Steve, such a good guy. <laughs> um, where did I, did I send it? 
Uh, da, 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 da. I don't know if it's, is it right here? Pretty cool. I don't know where it is. I'm back and forth with this guy all the time. Oh, right here, Loom video update. So what I did is I send this out and I love how Follow Up Boss puts this as a link yeah, in the email. Yep. So it gives you this thumbnail. So it shows. So then I'll just say, hey, here's a Loom video trucky market update. Well, now I say, hey, see, I just want to show you something I thought was pretty eye-opening. Well, here's the Loom video. Well, now I see he's opened it 10 times and he's clicked on it to watch it. Now, Loom is giving me updates that he's watching it. Follow Up Boss is showing me that he's opening it. He comes so, back and goes, love it. I also love you guys using our Tableau software for data visualization. Like most yeah. people are going to have no idea. That, I honestly have no idea what the heck that is. But like, <laughs> well, you've built so, the system, man. I mean, that system is dialed in, but it's just consistent, right? And I mean, Brian, are you guys using, um, you're using HiNote, aren't you? Absolutely. You know, and HiNote is one of those products that it's so inexpensive too. What was it like 250 bucks a year, Mike? I don't even remember. It's so inexpensive that. Yeah. It's, it shows up on my P&L some ways, but it almost doesn't even bother me. You know, and, and here's a couple of things. I'll piggyback on what you said. I love the idea that I can interact with people and be a real person. So I can send somebody a high note and there's a video of me talking about my VIP buyer program, my seller program, or there's a video. And here's one of the things, and I'm sure you guys have this, but if you're using high note, get a couple of your uh, past clients to do a video review. And by the way, don't have it be some pretty video review. Like right. the best one is somebody who's driving down the road, you know, holding their cell phone. Hopefully they're not, they're not holding their cell phone. I'm not suggesting driving it while, while recording, but you know, just driving down the road saying, Hey, it was really great to work with Mike, you know, him and his team were on top of it. We had the most amazing experience. That's far better than something that looks like it was made in a studio. And by the way, the credibility that comes with that. And here's the thing. I don't even have to tell them to look at it, right? Because I can say, hey, Mike, look at my reviews. And you're like, yeah, whatever, you know. But if I'm going through and I've got some interesting information, you know, what else is here? Oh, look, here's a review. It does a lot of the work for you. And I think it's an extremely powerful tool. I'm glad you're using it. Yeah, and, and knowing, right? Like exactly what you're saying is just being personal, but, but start thinking with the end in mind. I know you guys say this all the time. Is it possible to build something? And everyone's like, well, is it possible? To yeah, it's possible to do anything. But like, is it worth my time? I is it worth me doing it? Um, Barry just released in the in the Y Lopo success, commu success community on, on Facebook. It's funny. He said, talking about um, following up with people and saying, hey, just calling you to check in. That's the laziest salesperson line of all time. Every sales, hey, how are you doing, Natalie? Just checking in. It was like, my mom checks in with me, dude. I don't want you to check in with me. <laughs> yeah, he's like, we're grown people. Do I really want this person checking in? No, but I want to be able to say, hey, I know you were talking about putting your search on hold, okay? And I know you're looking in this area, but here's what I want to do. I just want to show you what's happened in the past 60 days with the number of buyer interactions that has happened. Does that mean prices are going to drop below every? No, here's another data set. Here's all this information, but now you're not the one saying, Hey, just trust me. If I show them something, they normally go, okay, I trust you. Like, I get it. I've seen it now. Now I, now when they call, they're like, do you need a video for this? They're like, no. So like I use loom in the same way, do a loom video. When you send an offer, I just want to tell you about our offer. I just want to do this. Or when you send a listing presentation or you send disclosures, pull it up and record a loom video. And just you walking through it for somebody, Hey, here's the offer. I just want to walk through it with you. That's a game. It, it's what, like $10 or something like that? Like, it's a game changer. Yeah. Like, I want well, you to think you've done this in the past. It sounds like you're doing it. I, and everybody on this call has done this. And everybody on this call is probably going to continue to do this. But how many times have you sent somebody an offer and 12 seconds later they signed it? This They're about to spend a half a million dollars, a million dollars, hey, $100,000. You've never covered the contract with them. You've never done anything. They go and go click, click, click. DocuSign drops them all the way down to the bottom. They hit click and they send and they sign it. So doing a video, if nothing else, a little CYA, right? Hey, by the way, guys, just I'm just gonna go over this contract. The, you know, purchase price is here. This is this. This is the closing date. This is gonna happen here. This, you know, all these little things, just a quick five, seven minute video. 
that goes a mile. I mean, we've got stuff going on right now where, where, where a seller's saying, well, you didn't explain this to me. You didn't explain this to me. I don't know if we did or not. I wasn't there. I'm not there with every single seller. But boy, if I got a video, it's really dialed in. And you know, there's a, there's a rule in real estate for me, be different. Now, if you want to take it to the next level, be different and be better. But at a minimum, be different. Bring something up that not the average person is doing. And I love all of your systems that you built are about emphasizing. Remember this, guys. Every person who you're talking to as a buyer or seller is talking to five to seven other agents. I don't know 100% if that's true. But if you make that assumption when you go to market to them, when you make that assumption, when you go to talk to them, Think about how that changes your mindset and how you change it. Well, I better be better. I better bring them this. I better bring them value. And I'll leave with one more thing. I got a little carried away here. But you were talking about following up with your clients. Here's something my coach said the other day, and I believe this wholeheartedly. You can never follow up too many times if you're bringing value. And think about that. If every time I talk to you, you're like, man, but that was great. I was some value in that. You're going to take my call. If every time I call you and I go, hey, Mike, what's going on? I don't know, Brian, I'm kind of busy and actually have a life and have other things to do than just have a random conversation with you. So <laughs> bring value all along the way. And people want to talk to you. And these things, by the way, they're call behinds, right? If I send you a high note, I can call you. If I send you the thing with Real Scout, I can call you. Hey, by the way, did you get this thing? Did you look at it? What am I doing? I'm bringing value. Get over this question. You know anyone who wants to buy or sell real estate? Do you want to buy or sell real estate? That, that's not something everyone wants to have a conversation and people will stop taking your phone call. So really applaud what you're doing, Mike. Great job. Thank you. And Thank you. Uh, la last thing to leave us on, I know we're getting to our, our uh, end here is, do you want to have one more question for Mike is from Jim. Are you using both Loom and Bomb? Bon? If you are using both of them, are you? how are you using them differently? Same question between Brevity, Area Pulse and Real Scout. Do they overlap at all? Could you get away with just one of each? Do you find it's necessary to have all of them? It's 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 uh, over the top, to be honest. Uh, I would just go real scout. Like my non my non uh, negotiables would be high note, real scout, and follow boss would be my my non negotiables. Uh, Why Lopo? Uh, uh, I've been hit and miss with Why Lopo at times. I've always tried to be like um, in full transparency like everybody else in most communities are like, I can't stand it. And then you love it because it does something that you were like, how the heck did it do that? And then it did it. And you're like, cancel, can't like, I'm not canceling it. Like I'm keeping it. And like, so it's like, these things do some amazing things. And we're just like, and you know, like we can obviously get in and dive deep. And if someone has questions, like feel free to reach out to me, but like I you do use, I use bomb bomb for some of the templating because it's directly integrated with follow up boss. So since it's directly integrated, it's very easy to put templated stuff from BombBomb in. But like if I'm doing an offer review, Loom has a like Chrome or Safari. It's got a really easy little plugin where at the very top, you can just go Loom video, your screen, like right there, done. It's it's just so much easier than BombBomb for like that type of thing. So Loom does more of that. BombBomb is more of my templated stuff. Like if I'm, if the lead comes in from Zillow, I have an immediate thing that gets sent out in the email that says, hey, it's Mike, I'm the team lead here. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Also, um, you know, you're going to get a review after your conversation. Please select us as your agent. You know, you know mm -hmm. that whole stuff with Zillow. Like, so you're the only person they see for six months. Like, that's a huge thing. <laughs> so like yep. that type of stuff is like what most, I mean, it drives me up a wall. How many agents still call you on realtor.com and Zillow thinking you're the listing agent. Um, but like, they're just so far away from it. So, uh, I use those. Uh, area pulse, I do not use fully yet. That is still being directly integrated with follow boss. So that's not an action yet. Uh, Brivity, since uh, Real Scout came out with their listing tools, with can do these market updates and market alerts and things like that, I am steering of doing that more than going to with Brivity's um, platform. They do, there's a lot of great things that Brivity does from a, an overall um, arching company. Um, it just, it's the beauty of, I would say, follow boss and the Agreed. beauty of many of the things that it does. And I'm a huge proponent of follow boss. And the reason that is, is because um, it's not, it's, it's the master being a CRM and you get to take yeah. all the best from all these best companies, best in class at what they do and pl pull them all together. So um, well, that's where I started all in ones. Well, and, so and the circle, it kind of, take, you take it, kind of take it to full circle as systems to me are very personal and, and very need to be aligned with how you want to operate. So there's no like, you know, square peg is not going to fit in a round hole, right? So um, 
you know, so I, I, one of the best things that I think we can offer is sitting down with you to talk through what you're trying to do and then help you discover some of the tech that's going to accomplish what you're, you know, wanting to, right? Like instead of playing shiny object, it's let's look at the vision and then find the tech that's going to fit that vision. And we can do that and help you guys out with that big time. Right. And we're not trying to push any one yeah. products or anything else, but we've had conversations with with like people all over like the continent. We're talking, you know, Canada all the way down to Southern California, right? And down to Mexico. Just, now in Mexico too. Yeah. So it's like let us, you know, kind of help guide you and consult you through some of these practices that are going to fit what you're looking to do. And exactly. I think that's where you've gotten a lot of that value too from us too, right? Mike? Yeah, honestly, it's just it's just asking. Like I just yeah. ask and be like, hey, you know, does this work? And and honestly, I most of the time I don't have to ask because somebody else already has, right? right. Like everyone's like, well, I, you know, you didn't come up with that. No, duh. Like when, when have we ever had an original idea? Like I didn't come up with something amazing, like rip off and duplicate, rip off and duplicate, man. Like I was the first person that was like, I'm going to create something better. <laughs> right. Like so why? I'm yeah. not selling real estate anymore. Now I'm the guy behind my computer working on web hooks. It does this, to, like, I'm not Leverage. that guy. It's like, Leverage. is that the highest and best use of my time? No. What is the highest and best use of my time? I'm the visionary. Do I need an integrator or is Osiris my integrator? Or right. am I this or am I that? Or do I need, to, can I integrate things when I need to? Sure. But I don't have to reinvent the wheel. All right. I have to do is say, oh my gosh, this is the theory behind it. This resonates. Why do I have a, a real scout and a brevity and a high and a loom and a bomb bomb? Well, what, what if somebody doesn't open that one, but they open this one 30 times? Well, what if this one doesn't get open 10 times? I stop sending it and I send the other one. Why? Because I'm hoping. And if they react to that one, stop sending that one. That's like saying like, do you like text, call or email? And they're like text and you email and call them. Like yep. you, you, you go to where the consumer is at. And, and so those little things with tech is like, just bring them into your ecosystem and learn from others. Brian has challenged me on Homebot and I accept the challenge. I'm like, okay, like use it. Does it have to be perfect? No, you're right. Maybe that's my limiting belief that it's not going to get opened by clients anymore because one person said that it's complete BS. Am I going to let that stop me? Or is it the 50 people that opened it? Is it that one person that told me that that was wrong? That's the type of stuff where we get into our own heads and we start doubting things and just go follow the people that have done it before you and done it well, and you'll have success. When you start trying to recreate everything, you struggle in my opinion. Just too much, it's too much alone, right? Yeah, and yeah. they kind of come in full circle for everybody. We really appreciate you guys just all being here and tuning in with us. We hope this was chock full of value. Um, you know, I think two things I want to leave you with is just a third video option that does integrate into Follow Up Boss, and the free account is amazing. I can't believe it's free. Um, is Dub D U B B? Yeah. It integrates directly into Follow Up Boss into the email and texting widget in Fub, so you can literally click, pull it up, record a selfie video, send it. I very rarely communicate with my clients without a video attached, unless it's a phone call. I'm always videoing them. I send my offers through that with my video. So just another good option. I also do use that in conjunction with Loom because when I'm doing unsolicited CMAs, I do a Loom video showing the home bot, showing. And so Dub's amazing. And then the last thing I want to leave you guys with is oftentimes, so if you schedule a consultation with Osiris, 99% of the time, you're going to be meeting with me. And oftentimes that call doesn't end in you purchasing something or buying something. But what it does end with is you looking at your tech stack in a different way. You having new ideas, you having a new perspective on how you can utilize your tech. Or maybe it's like, gosh, I really want to fill this gap. And you think that it's got to be this expensive automation from Osiris. But we ended up meeting, I'm like, oh my gosh, you didn't know that Loom does that? Or you didn't know that Hino does that? Yeah, just go call those guys and buy that product, right? So regardless if it's, I need this automation or, hey, I just don't know what tech I need, we're system consultants. There's really not any piece of technology in the real estate industry that I don't know about or Jeff doesn't know about or Brian doesn't know about. I know somebody using it, not using it, being successful with it, failing with it. So use us as resources for that as well. We live, eat, breathe, sleep, real estate technology, and not everyone else does. So leverage yourself, right? 
So I just want to thank you, Mike, so much for coming and, and chatting yeah. with us today and just being really open, sharing your journey as a you know professional baseball player and now rock star realtor. And for everybody who wasn't able to tune in, this is going to be, um, this was live on Facebook, so it'll be reposted there. We'll also be posting this on our YouTube channel and we'll send out a recap video of this recording to everybody that, um, you know, is on our email list in our system. So thank you real guys, quick, everybody. Real quick, you. Mike, where can, where can somebody find you? If they were to look you up, are you looking for agents on your team, um, referrals, that kind of thing? Where can people find you? All the time, all the time. Um, you can find me on social media. Um, Mike Marjma is on there. Uh, if you're in the South, it can be Marjama. Um, either one it doesn't really matter. It does. I mean, dude, you, you get it enough. Uh, but yeah, social media is a great way to get a hold of me. Uh, sometimes I don't get back right away because I do get quite a few messages here and there. Um, and then online, you can just go to website. Um, all my stuff is linked on social media and stuff like that. So cool. Um, it's a great place to go. Great. Thanks. Appreciate it, man. No, awesome. I appreciate you guys having me. And and yeah, anybody, you can reach out at any time. I'm more than happy to answer any questions for, for anybody about what we're using and why we're using. And I'm, I'm an open book. And um, if you don't have follow up boss or any of the other great systems we talk about, um, that's the number one I would look at because the community is far more collaborative than any other I've ever been a part of. Definitely. Awesome. Good well, stuff, we're really excited to conclude our first uh, system spotlight. So everybody, thanks for tuning in with us. And we're looking forward to seeing you guys back here soon. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Ciao.